Professor Khan, can we use payment rights as collateral? Yes, I think payment rights uh, are what I call new properties that Article 9 recognizes as, as collateral, which means you can use payment rights in order to get loans. So yes, payment rights are recognized collaterals under Article 9. What is a payment right? Well, payment right is actually a debt. Uh, let's say that uh, I owe you $5,000. Now, this is my debt. I am the obligor. I, you know, must pay this money to you. But for you, this debt is property because you have the payment right. I have the monetary obligation. So for you, $5,000 that you will get is actually property. And Article 9 allows you to treat this money as property and uh, this debt as property. And then go to the bank and say to the bank, you know, I have $5,000 in debt. Can you give me $1,000 in loan? And I will give you a security interest in this promissory note that I have. Uh, so I think that's how it works. The debt becomes personal property for the owner of the debt. And I can transfer that then to somebody and that's what creates that security interest? No, you don't transfer the payment rights. I think what you do is you enter into a secure transaction and you create a security interest in payment rights. Okay. So you're not transferring the payment rights. You're creating a security interest in the payment rights. And only if you default that the payment rights would be transferred to the lender. Okay. Um, why are there different categories of these payment rights that yes. they can be? Uh, yes. I think there are several types of payment rights. You're right. So debt can be structured in many different ways. I think one way to structure debt is to write a promissory note, as I said. So promissory notes, both in your real property and personal property, even if there is no property involved. Just in the case of a loan, you get money, you write a promissory note, like student loans, you know, you write a promissory note to pay that money back. So instrument is the evidence of debt. Similarly, you could have an account. For example, uh, the Electric City Company, it has several accounts. Hundreds of people are using electricity, and the company is, you know, paying, uh, sending them bills, and then they're paying their monthly bills you know, every month. So the company has all these accounts, and the company can go to the bank and say, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of dollars coming every month to us, and we don't ask our clients to write promissory notes. It's just an open account. Mm -hmm. So. The people who use electricity, they have this debt, they have monetary obligation. But the electricity company has the monetary right. And this monetary right is not in the form of a promissory note, this is an open account. So you can use account as, as collateral too. Then the other is deposit account. Uh, even a deposit account uh, is a payment right. So when you, you know, deposit money in a bank, the bank is the debtor and you are the creditor. You have the payment right and the bank has the monetary obligation. So you can use even a deposit account as collateral. And so chattel paper is another one. See, a chattel paper is something that arises out of a secure transaction. Now instruments may not, accounts may not, uh, but chattel paper, always, always, there's an underlying secure transaction. Similarly, then we have payment intangibles. So all these are different forms of debt and different forms of uh, payment rights. And they're divided that way because there are different methods of perfecting security interests in them. And there are different uh, evidences to show this debt. Um, do 
all of these arise out of secure tra transactions? No, I just said, you know, no, not all of these uh, debts don't arise from secure transactions. transactions. Only the chattel paper. Okay. And how is a deposit account a payment right? Yeah, I just said that the deposit account is a payment right because when you deposit money in a bank, the bank becomes your debtor. The bank is not a bailee. The bank is not holding money on your behalf. But the bank becomes your debtor. And therefore, it is a payment right that you have against the bank. And uh, you can use the deposit account as collateral. Okay. Um, what if you want to sell one of these? Is it a secured transaction to sell one of these payment accounts? Uh, yes, I think one of, uh, yes, if you sell these payment rights, except the deposit account, you can sell accounts, you can sell instruments, promissory notes, you can sell chattel paper, you can sell payment intangibles. Now, Article 9 treats these transactions not as sale, but as secure transactions. Remember that uh, there's a big difference between an outright sale and a secure transaction. Mm -hmm. Because in an outright sale, no security interest is reserved. But in a secure transaction, you know, a security interest is created and obtained. So when you sell, let's say, accounts, Article 9 treats this sale as a secure transaction. And it treats the seller as the debtor and the buyer as the secured party. And the reason for this is that in case the seller sells the accounts twice, he sells to buyer number one, and then he turns around and sells the same accounts to buyer number two. Now, how do we sort out the competition between buyer one and buyer two? Mm -hmm. Of course, one solution is to say, you know, buyer one always wins because buyer one was the first to buy, and once the seller sold the accounts to buyer one, nothing was left mm -hmm. for the seller to sell something again. Mm -hmm. But Article 9 doesn't find that solution. Article 9 solution <coughs> is, Article 9 solution is that we're gonna say, we're gonna treat the sale as a secure transaction, and the first buyer, if the first buyer wants to protect itself, they better go and file a financing statement and perfect their security interest. And that way they give a notice to the subsequent buyers that, you know, they have a, you know, a prior, uh, uh, they have a prior interest in the accounts. So same goes for channel paper that you need to perfect by filing, giving notice to the second buyers. And the buyer perfects those the same as under the Article 9 of the UCC? Yes. I think uh, you perfect your security interest in the accounts, in the child paper, by filing a financing statement, as you do with respect to other collaterals. Thank you for answering our questions today, Professor Khan. Thank you very much.